Welcome to Sweetheart Survivals. I'm Sharla. I'm Justin. What's on our table today? Kemet. Kemet. Kemet's a two to five player game. Yep. Published by Meta Metagot. There you go. There, I said it kind of right this time. Yep. And it plays in about an hour. Yeah. Two Most to five of the players. Time. Two to five. I already said that. Okay. And 13 and up is what they recommend for the ages. You got it. Right. Excellent. So this is our review. If you want to check out uh, the overview that we did or the full game playthrough that we did, there'll be yep. links where Justin had his fingers dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, there will be. <laughs> there will be. What do you think of the components of Kemet? I think actually the components of Kemet are excellent for the style of game that it is. Yep. Because you've got your little plastic people. And they're all, they each have a different shape for each color. Yeah. And um, you each get a different player board for each uh, person. Like they yeah. match. Although you'll notice that I was playing red, but I picked the screen of the girl that with the snakes. It's only because I didn't want to look at the player board that had the crocodile men. So sorry if that offends anyone. I'm sure they're okay with it. Okay. Um, but the artwork, like it's an Egyptian kind of style theme. Yeah. So the art is gorgeous for that theme of a game. Yeah. And then these big creatures that you get, the mega monsters. Yep. They did a really good job with these. They look even better when someone has them painted. Yeah. But even unpainted, they look awesome. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of good detail. Mm-hmm. And but they're... If someone... a... Sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. They're a soft plastic, so I mean... Not that I want to bend this scorpion's tail all over the place, but if it gets banged up a little bit, yeah. it's not going to snap right If it off. drops on the floor or something. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just going to say, like, they're very detailed in how they made them. Yeah. So if you were handy with painting, like, the details are just going to come right out. Yep. Yeah. So And then they have these really cool um, four-sided dice for the pyramids, which I actually really love that about the components. Yeah. They're nice big, they're marble, so they look awesome. Yeah. So the components of this game are excellent quality. What do you think about the strategy? Uh, the strategy of Kemet. So when we're talking about strategy, we're talking about strategy, tactics, and randomness. So let's start with the randomness because there's very, very, very little randomness in this game. Yeah, there's no randomness or luck in this game. The only thing that is random there's is that. you have a deck of divine intervention cards and you shuffle them and everyone gets one every round. Mm -hmm. So you're not really That's sure good. what you're gonna get from those. That's it. There's no other randomness in this game whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all the special power things are available for the entire game. Yep. Like. A certain few don't come out, and then you get to pick from them. Yeah. Yeah, they're all available. Before you play Kemet for the first time, you're going to want to sit down with the um, Divine Intervention and Power Tile Reference Book, mm -hmm. and you're going to want to really study that, um, because when you start figuring out what Power Tiles you're going to be buying during your game, all of them are available, so it's going to be a big part of the strategy, mm -hmm. is trying to figure out what you want to get. Um, the game that we just did, the playthrough of Kemet, my strategy at the very beginning of the game was I'm going to get the White Pyramid up to level 4 as soon as possible and I'm just going to get high powered white level cards so that every night I get lots of awesome free stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Yeah, it was yeah. a good strategy. Yep. Yeah. Um, it didn't work at first because at first you were getting stuff that allowed you to do really well in like combat and moving around mm. and I had nothing but because I kept getting all this stuff for free after a couple of rounds everything kind of like yeah, an it, engine kicked in it really paid off for yeah. you so the so, randomness in Kemet is super low almost non-existent mm -hmm. um, the strategy is super high mm -hmm. and the tactics come down to um, what can you do in each turn to go towards that strategy? Right. Yep. Yeah, the tactics are basically about moving what where. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Super high strategy and tactics. Even the combat, there is no dice rolling. Um, combat is based off of a deck of combat cards. Mm -hmm. And everybody has the same set of cards. Exactly. So it's, I mean, I don't know what card you're choosing 
and you could be throwing some divine intervention cards behind that mm -hmm. but it's not random no. it's just a little bit of deduction bluffing and the only way you're going to have a different card and there's only two of them in the game you buy them with the power tiles yeah and then it's neat how like we all have the same cards yes but we can't count them and say oh he used this so he has this 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 and this left in his hand because yeah. we actually have to discard one yeah when you're choosing your card you're going to play yeah so there's can't be really much card counting in it which is kind of cool yeah. because it doesn't come down to I know what the last card he has in his hand is, so my card's way better. I'm going to win this round. Yeah. So it's cool how they did that um, mechanism there yeah. to out make of, it a little less predictable. Yeah, and out of every single like kind of combat-y game we've ever played, this combat is probably the best combat I've ever played. Really? Yeah. The cards, using the cards, having to toss one card away, mm -hmm. choosing a card, everyone's got the same card. I can see, yeah. Yeah. But I'm not generally a high strategic player. You mean like the tactical... Tactical, that, yeah. Me battle thing. I'd almost rather have a little bit more random. I gotcha. Like, my personal opinion. Yeah. 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 Because I'm not minded that way to, like, strategize that well for it. That's the only reason. True. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, if you're looking at Kemet and wondering, um, it's high, high strategy, um, rather high tactics with a minuscule amount of luck. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the complexity of Kemet? Kemet is, I would have to say for myself, a mid to complex game. Yeah. Um, because it's very strategic and like I just said in the previous part like my brain is not overly strategic in this sort of way mm -hmm. so I do find it a little bit more difficult than yeah. other games for sure um, if you've been watching our reviews you know that one of the things that we don't enjoy in games is the games that have here's everything and it's always available in every game right because yeah. you can do that I think it's what they call min maxing yeah. Is that what? Am I using that term? You can right? be min maxing, but just basically you have to know all of those tiles and how they and, work together. And, yeah. Yeah. And you need, you need to know that, otherwise you're not going to be able to play the game very well. It's like, well, I could get this, and man, I'll get that, and maybe I'll get that, but that's not going to work. The thing about having everything available each time you play is, I find it makes the game samey because you can go after the same strategy each time. Once you yeah. find your favorite strategy. Yeah. Now, the only way you're going to have something different is if someone accidentally or maybe you're playing with a new person and they, like, buy a card that's, like, very, very crucial to your strategy. Yeah. And then you got to work your way around it. Yeah. But, yeah. But I think having all of this stuff out and needing to know what all of it does mm -hmm. adds a level of complexity to the game. It does because it's going to take a lot of studying. Like really, honestly, the first time you play, you should be like, all right, we're set up, we're ready to go. Now, let's all just stop and take the next 20 minutes to stare at these tiles and figure mm -hmm. out what they all do. Or just read this book aloud or whatever. Yeah. 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 But that being said, the setup is very easy. Yeah. Yeah. And the concepts to teach it are not overly difficult concepts. No. It's just, yeah, everything's available. And you need to, like you said... There's a lot of rules to look up it. and stuff yeah. like that. But I think, I mean, compared to other war games... It's not as difficult as other war games, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think the complexity is a lot lower. Yeah. Um, but... It's hard for us to judge, though, because we don't really play a lot of war yeah. games. Yeah. Um, we chose this one because it had more kind of Euro-y, a little bit. Yeah, it was action selection, resource management... Uh, the card combat was one of the reasons why we wanted to get into it. And yeah, so for us, comparing this to other games, it's a little complex. There's like little tiny rules, almost fiddly, where you're like, I'm not really sure. Let's check it out. I have to out. look it up again. Yeah. 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 But I think that, again, like you said, a lot of that has to do with we're not big war gamers. Yeah. Yeah. And that being said about the rules and that, the rule book is really laid out well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not a fiddly rule book. No. It's just, it's a lot to remember. Yeah. yeah. There's just rules that aren't intuitively clear. 
That's because we're not war gamers. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the playability? Uh, the playability, mechanics versus theme. Uh, the theme where you are an Egyptian god and you are summoning Egyptian monsters and Egyptian soldiers. I mean, you totally feel like mm -hmm. um, if you have ever watched, I think it was the second Mummy movie where they talked about uh, the Scorpion King. And the Scorpion King pledges himself to the god of Anubis, and Anubis takes the sand and creates those awesome warriors. Mm -hmm. That's this game right there, except you're Anubis or one of the other gods, and you're just creating monsters and sending them out to kill people. And you're like, well, you did, you guys did a good job. You won that battle, but you know what? I'm just gonna take you back from the sands and just get some prayer points for it. Ha ha ha. The mechanics and the theme totally blend yeah, well together. Yeah, they're excellent. Yeah. yeah. You feel like a powerful god doing like incredibly powerful things in this game, mm -hmm. which is pretty awesome. At the same time, there are some interesting restrictions um, that mean you can't really run away and win within like a round, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, scales for the number of players, it scales well. Uh, as soon as you get into a three player game, you flip the board over and it's got the three cities. A four player board in this game opens up to the different cities that are available. It scales really, really well. It just adds time, right? Yeah, just time. That's about it. And sometimes having a little bit of downtime in a highly strategic game like this is a good thing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you still need to pay attention to what people are doing and getting, but at the same time, having a little bit of extra time to be like, okay, what am I going to do next round? What can I possibly do? Mm -hmm. Type thing. So yeah, that helps. That's true. Yeah. Um, game length, it's... The game really, really pushes for you to come out swinging. It's not a game that um, rewards turtling and just hanging back at all. So because of that, the games are very, very quick, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I can even see, like, if you had five people that were used to the game... It would take an hour. An hour, and the sure. game is done. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, as for replayability, there's no kind of random setup at all. Mm -hmm. Every time you play, all of the tiles are out and available. Um, the board is the exact same. It only changes if the number of players change. Mm -hmm. So really, the only difference in setup is your pyramids mm -hmm. um, you start off with either all three at level one or one of them at level one and another at level two and that's going to inform everyone at the table what your strategy is that's, kind of yeah yeah i mean you could possibly you could change it up oh, yeah. on them like haha you thought i was going defensive but i didn't yeah and whatever but that's it that's the only difference whenever mm -hmm. you're setting up so the replayability of this it depends because if you're the type of person that's like, okay, well, I tried this strategy this time, yeah. and then you study the book of cards, and then you think, oh, I bet this combination, if I could get this combination, I bet I'd do really good. So if sure. you want to study the cards and, like, figure out which combinations you want to try to aim towards, yeah. that could give you a different feel each time you play the game. That's true. So I guess it kind of depends, like, for us... Having a game that has like a different setup each time mm -hmm. and different goals, we find that more, more replayable. replayable. Yeah. Whereas for this game, you're going to want to be the type of player that, you know, I need to play that game multiple times to get better at it and find the best strategies. Right. That's your if replayability. If that makes it replayable for you, then it's yeah. replayable. Yeah. For us, it just seems like, well, this is the exact same thing we had set up last time. Mm-hmm. So I guess it kind of depends on the player. And you know what, too? In a two-player game, because everything's available and there's so many cards, yeah. you can really go for kind of the same thing each time. Yeah, it's true. But if you play a lot of five-player games, yeah. that's really going to get a little bit more chaotic in like what gets taken first and what gets yeah. left over and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's a good point. And going back to the strategy and the tactics, I can imagine in a five-player game, the tactics becoming a little bit stronger than the strategy. Right, and even a little bit more random. Yeah. Yeah. It depends, yeah, it's going to depend a little bit on your player count for yep. that. Yeah, good points. So, does Kemet have uh, the awesomeness 
or the awesome. cuteness. Awesome. <laughs> you didn't even have to finish the question. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to say whoever designed the graphics and whatever, it's not cute. <laughs> I don't think they were going for that, so I think they're okay they're with okay this. They're okay with that, yeah. which you said that perfectly, so I don't have to say anything else. Like, yep. yeah, it's not the kind of game that you wanted to be cute in the first place. No. But as me, with being the cuteness is so Im important, like... Yeah, there's not one drop of cute in this whole box. No, nope, there's just a whole box of awesome. Yeah. 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 Uh, the pyramids, the power, just like sweeping across the board. Um, the fact that all of like my green pieces are different sculpts yeah, than Charlotte's than pieces. These red ones. Yes. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, the artwork is awesome. Those big mega monsters are awesome. Yeah. Like. If this was a game that I was going to play once a week for the rest of my life, I, I would, would paint those. Totally. I would learn how to paint just to paint those. It'd be amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, just a whole big box of awesome. Mm -hmm. The kind of group that this would be a game for? Yeah, what do you think? You have to be a war gamer. Well, either that or, like, you know, into war games. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be into war games. Um, or I don't know if you can use that term. I don't know. It feels like it, but it's not. It's like kind of on a. I say that because I'm not into war games, and there's a whole lot of awesome in here. Mm -hmm. But it's still a war game. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you you have to be into either war games, a war gamer, or you have to be into like heavily confrontational games that's all about beating the crap out of each other. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of game player you need to be. Yeah. To really get into this game. Um, you have to be strongly invested into heavy, high strategy games. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for a game of risk, which has a whole bunch of random die rolls to see what happens, this is not the game for you. If you've played risk and really enjoy the war aspect of it and hate the random die rolls and you're just like, there's got to be ways of controlling that, this might be the game for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Um, the parts of the game that I really love are the action selection and resource management of it. Mm -hmm. So if you've played games with those kinds of mechanisms and you like confrontational games, but maybe you're not a war gamer, this could be a game for you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you are not, if you and your group are not into highly confrontational... confrontational. High strategic. Battle games, yeah. Yeah. Hi, Kiels. This is not the game for you. Yeah. 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 Kaylee. She's okay. Yeah. Just don't put your tail in the camera. Nope. Thanks. She's good. Yeah. All right. Uh, is Kemet a keeper or a shuffle off game? I I have to first start by saying Kemet is a great game. Yes. It's a really, really excellent game. Yep. Um, I is it agree. a Charla game? I think I've played the game enough. Yep. You know, I've played it. I've seen what it's about. I did enjoy playing it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not the I'm not the player that's going to invest the time to try different things each time and and try to make it different myself each time. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yep. Um. So it's a really excellent game, but I don't feel the need to keep it. And I'm completely right there with you. It is an amazing game. Um, it is probably the best battle game I've ever played. Mm -hmm. And there's two things that make it not a keeper for me. The first one is all of these power tiles being out every single time. Mm -hmm. This is always the same every game. Because of that, for me, it, it's, it doesn't have that excitement of what's going to shake out this time we play right yeah what am i going to have to Work hurdle with. over or whatever yeah yeah so that is the first thing the second thing is it's a straight up battle game you come out swinging you you every round you've got to go out and destroy some of your opponents and as as much as i love everything else about this game i am not a war gamer yeah i don't find like highly strategic games don't really get too tense for me. Yeah. But where if there's a little bit more randomness and luck in it, 
I get that sense of anticipation. Yeah. And I get a little bit more excited. So this game doesn't really have a lot of that. So it it doesn't hit on those certain points for me. Yeah. Even so. though it's a really good game. Yep. Like, and you can really um, gain a lot of good skills of game playing by playing it. I just feel like I played it enough. Yeah. Yeah. So, amazing game. Not a keeper for us. <laughs> <laughs> Did we finish Kemet as Sweethearts or Rivals? We, we finished, finished Kemet as... Rivals. Rivals. Yeah. Especially in the last game. Yep. Because I did, re like you said, I did really had good stuff at the beginning. And then I got focused on, like, only on myself. Yeah. And what I was doing. And I kind of didn't see what you were... I wasn't anticipating your plan. Yeah. And then I just got left behind in the dust. Yep. And the dry, dry desert dust. <laughs> and I can't imagine this ever being a Sweethearts game. It's No, ever. It's a never, purely ever. confrontational yeah. game. So you have yes. to be rivals. Yeah, because there's no like, hey, I'll trade you wood for sheep. Die! <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Haters.